Hi guys, um, today's video is going to be just lecture only, um, no, no sample pictures, it's, it's an important topic, we're going to, uh, I'm going to tell you guys how to figure out your true focal length, um, why is it important, because it's directly related to your minimum shutter speed, you know, you have to have a minimum shutter speed, meaning you cannot fall below that shutter speed, and if you do, that affects the sharpness of your picture. So ultimately what I'm teaching you right now is going to help you figure out the minimum shutter speed and that's going to help you um, get sharper pictures. So how to figure out your true focal length. Just a you know a brief overview of your two types of sensors in your cameras in, in your DSLR camera. You have your full frame and you have your crop sensor. Okay. Full frame ones are like the professional grades, they capture a lot more detail, they're rather proof. Um, so they start off with about $2,400, $2,500, um, and go up to like $7,000 um, and up. Okay, so that's your full frame. But most of the people actually own your crop sensor ones, okay? Um, they start off with, you know, I think $500 and they go up to around um, $1,700 around, around that range. Those are your crop sensor. So what happens is in a crop sensor your, your, your picture basically gets cropped and what happens when you crop a picture? It becomes bigger. You know, you get a, you get a close-up. So basically the true focal length you're getting is not uh, what your lens um, is telling you. Or here, I don't mean to confuse you. Here's a 50 millimeter lens on this on this camera, right? Is this really 50 millimeter lens? Well, when you put this lens on a full frame camera um, like D700 or D3S, this will give you 50 millimeter. But when you put this lens on a crop sensor body like the 40, the 60, the 3100, the 5000, the 5100, the 3000, the 300S, those are all crop sensor um, cameras. What happens is that this 50 millimeter is actually giving you 75 millimeter. That's your true focal length. So there are two, um, there's a small formula that I can, uh, that you use to figure out your true focal length. It's different in Nikon and it's different in your Canon. First you have to um, find out if you have a full frame sensor or a crop sensor. You could just you know, look it up, Google it, and if it's a crop sensor and if it's a Nikon, you simply multiply your focal length by 1.5. So 50 millimeter lens times 1.5 will give you your true focal length of um, your crop sensor. So 50 times 1.5 is 75. So a 50 millimeter lens on a Nikon crop sensor body is actually 75 millimeter, okay? And a 50 millimeter lens on a Canon crop sensor body is 80 millimeter. Why? Because the crop factor on Canon crop sensor is 1.6. So you take 50 millimeter times 1.6. That will, that will give you 80 millimeters. So that is your true focal length. All you do is just multiply it. So if you're Canon, you multiply by 1.5, and if you are, uh, sorry, if you're Canon, you multiply by 1.6, and if you're Nikon, you multiply by 1.5. Uh, okay, that applies to every single lens, as long as it's on a crop sensor body. This lens here is 16 to 28. So on a Nikon, you multiply that by 1.5. So 16 will become 24 and 28 will become 42. So the true focal length of this lens is 24 to 42 millimeter, not 16 to 28. Now, you place this lens on a full frame sensor, you will get what you see, which is 16 to 28 millimeter, okay? 
Once you know your true focal length, you can figure out your minimum shutter speed, which I am going to talk about in the next video with some picture samples so you can see um, that if you fall below your minimum shutter speed, your pictures look a little blurry. And sometimes, if you're new to this, you can't really tell. Um, you know, I, the reason why I can tell is because the first thing I look at, I, when, when there are portraits, if the eye is sharp or not. And if you're below the minimum shutter speed, it's just not going to come out sharp. So stay tuned for that video and talk to you guys later.